Stephen Navarro does not have the word sex machine tattooed on the inside of his right hand. Anymore. Um, while sort of correct, a sign language is not technically considered digital. Um, a broken watch is right uh, twice a day, regardless of how much it costs. That's one thing. And finally, uh, Joe Nickel will be appearing in Thunder Down Under only tonight. <laughs> Our next speaker is uh, Susan Gerwig. Susan uh, does the Gorilla Skepticism Wikipedia stuff. It's amazing. It's amazing. That's a technical thing. Yes. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. People often ask me, like, what can I do? You know, I don't, I don't do lectures, I'm not a scientist or whatever. You can help Susan. Susan needs help all the time. You can go up with you, you can update pages and help do all kinds of things. And it's just one of those ways that almost anyone can sort of lend a hand. There's a lot of data mining that has to be done. Uh, she's going to talk about gorilla skepticism. The best advice she ever got was uh, take care of your teeth and your feet. Uh, purchase the most expensive mattress, sheets, and pillows you can afford. That's very good. Uh, she drinks tea with the lemon and, and sweetener. And she was a sock, sock, shoelace, shoelace person, which is the correct answer. <laughs> Go. Just for my own curiosity, if we do a, another, another clap question, how many people uh, voted in the last general election? Right? That's awesome. That's cool. I'm curious. I would ask who didn't vote, but I'm not going to do that. So, <laughs> so I think I'll be great. I'm just curious. Okay, please welcome to the stage. Here she is, Susan Gerber. Let's just get this out of the way. Selfie. <laughs> <Everybody> smile. <laughs> All right. So let's make sure. Mazimo, I'm sure you were disappointed that I was supposed to be Mazimo. I'll do this whole lecture with Tom in. All right. There we go. Let's see if everything works. First presenter on the starting thing. So. This is the March for Science. How many people marched for science? Yeah. <laughs> or supported science by, you know, doing something online or helping out with uh, the, the uh, you know, watching the social media and everything. I was there. I took this photo. This is Monterey County Skeptics. This is where I call home, Monterey County, California. And I I am a photographer, so I took one photo to represent the, comp the whole March for Science from Monterey County, and I felt that this is the one photo that did that for us. The timer is stuck at the exact same time. I hope somebody notices that. I should just start the timer. Oh, there it goes. Okay. Right. So give me a heads up if I go too long. So, March for Science. Look at this guy. Don't you just love him? First chance ever doing any kind of protests. Look at the socks. Yeah. Right? We have the woodpeckers over here. Any other people speaking for the woodpeckers? Anybody come dressed up as woodpeckers? This guy over here doesn't look too excited about the whole thing. But this one is so excited. The March for Science! Science! Cool! Awesome, right?
people write to your universities and tell you that they should you should be fired or you should be have uh, problems with your life of whatever kind. We're here to try to make sure that at least Wikipedia stays free of nonsense concerning you. We want to help support the people who join the science. There are people all over the world, I know Kevin also will be able to attest to this, that are being attacked. If you guys know who Leo Igwe is and Sonala the Markham, you will understand that these people are being attacked and they need to have some, we need to have their backs. Leo Igwe had, and Sonala the Markham had to be run out of their countries. There are people, believe it or not, in some parts of the world who are being killed for their beliefs. And we are sitting back and watching it happen. My team, I recruit, I train, I mentor. We are trying to change Wikipedia in all languages. We're trying to support and we're trying to get real information out there because we know people are going to Wikipedia and getting their information. And if they're not specifically going to Wikipedia, they're getting it anyway. Because people, if you're getting any kind of content anywhere, they're getting it. They're getting some background from the Wikipedia. The things you read on the news, the people you hear lecture, they're using Wikipedia. So Wikipedia is a very large, very large database. It has, it's known as the 10th largest website in the world. So if we don't have this, you guys, we're not doing our jobs as skeptics. This is a perfect tool for scientific skepticism. How many people here have heard of the Brzezinski Clinic? You guys should, come on, the skeptics, thank you. You don't have to know any of the things I'm about to talk about, I'm just talking about them generically, I'm using these examples. So the Brzezinski Clinic is, shall I say it, a cancer crap. Soon, come get me, Stan. Uh, this is a clinic that's in Texas, and he has been praying on, and I mean that with not in the religious sense, on people for decades. Bob Blaskowitz, dear friend of mine, David Gorski, where are you, David? Are you here? There he is over here in the corner. Have done amazing things along with other people to, to bring uh, the Brzezinski Clinic to the attention of the skeptic community and the science and the medical boards and so on. We know that people are going to have problems where their family members are dying and they're desperate for help. And they've never thought of cancer before. And they've never thought, and when the, when the, when the oncologist tells you you have stage four cancer, go home, live the best life you possibly can, there's nothing more we can do for you. A lot of people don't like that answer. And they're gonna seek out alternative methods. So the Brzezinski Clinic is one of those ones they're going to find out about. We want to make sure that when they go and Google Brzezinski Clinic, they're going to find some great information. And Wikipedia is the perfect source to go to. My project did not write this Wikipedia page. I should mention that Wikipedia is run by volunteers from all over the world. There is no they, it's only us. And I do not have all the, the, the good skeptics on my team. I have some great ones, but they're not all there. There are some really awesome Wikipedia editors out there who are doing the hard work. And those people have, are the, were the ones that built the Brzezinski page in English. If these people did not exist, then Wikipedia would be Conservapedia in a month. So there's a lot of work going on. So we, grow, we, maintain, we help maintain this page in English. But because Brzezinski is preying on people from around the world, we decided we had to write the page in other languages. So the GSOW project has, that's my team, the Real Skepticism on Wikipedia. We call ourselves GSOW or GSO. So if I refer to it that way, it's because of that. This page is written in Dutch. And it receives about 3,000 page views um, a year, not a lot. And then also we wrote it in another language, this is Spanish. 
because he's right across the border from Spain, uh, Mexico, and there's been some rumor that he may have to flee to Mexico. So we want to make sure that these Wikipedia pages are written in languages that people will be able to find on their own, read, understand. It's not academic, and all the citations at the bottom are in really great shape, so that if people want more information, they can go and learn more. This page gets maybe 6,000 page views a year. And then we have to write the page in Italian, because of this gentleman. How many people know who this is? Fabio, thank you. I can't believe it's not butter. So Fabio was a huge supporter of Brzezinski. His sister was brought there when she had stage for cancer. She died, um, not because of Brzezinski's treatment, but because she's very, very ill. But we don't know what's going to happen with Fabio. Is he going to go on tour? We don't know what he's going to do in Italy. I just came back from Italy. This is some amazing people there, by the way. Um, and uh, so we wanted to have the page ready just in case he decides he's going to go on tour in Italy in support of Rusinski. So we wrote the page in Italian. Another four or five thousand page views a year. Thankfully, he hasn't gone on tour for uh, Rusinski. And then we wrote it in, I believe this is Polish, right? And the reason why we had to write it in Polish is because Brzezinski is Polish. And I mentioned a few numbers, you know, maybe three or four or five thousand page views a year. This page has only been up a little over a year, and it's already received over 35,000 page views. And that's Polish. That's a lot of page views for a Polish page. So we know that people are accessing this Wikipedia page. They're trying to get information about Brzezinski in Polish. It's obvious that this needed to be done. Until we'd written it, it had not been done. So I'm going to switch stories here really quickly. People who don't know me, or who know me in a different way, would be totally shocked to find out that I'm running a Wikipedia editing team. They would be shocked, because my other half, I was putting on another half, um, is that I love, my favorite, my favorite world is to research grief vampires, those people who claim to talk to the dead. Okay? So I've been working with lots of people over the years, Mark Edward mainly. Um, who has taught me tons of things. And one of the latest sites of the day, this is the newest flavor of the day, Tyler Henry. Has anybody heard of Tyler Henry? He's on the e-network, okay? And anybody attended Mark's talk yesterday, workshop, knows about Tyler Henry. And again, it's not important to know who Tyler Henry is. Tyler Henry is just the latest flavor of the day. He's the medium of the day. He has a genuine smile. He looks like the type you would leave your cat and dog to. You know, take care of him when you've been out of town. He's the kind of guy who would be so nice. I mean, why would anybody think that he would be lying? Right? He was picked up out of a, basically out of a psychic shop in um, California, in Fresno, Hanford area, if anybody knows that, and given a, a TV show, a reality show, a year and a half ago. He's got three seasons out now. Shame on us. I mean, goodness gracious. Mark calls these fuzzy sweater skeptics. I mean, psychics. Oh, that's good. Psychics, sorry. We're just listening. Um, fuzzy sweater. Because they are just the genuine nice kind, you know, mom next door, that kind of thing. And uh, Tyler has been around since 2016, January 2016. He got some boosts from some of our favorite people. One of them is, everybody knows. Dr. Phil, the biggest skeptic in the world, I've been told. Jim Hunter and I'll tell you. That's what they told him. Nobody's a bigger skeptic than, than um, Dr. Phil. <sighs> we have a lot of work to do, you guys. So anyway, um, I do a lot of things with Tyler Henry. As far as, I'm less confrontational than Mark is. I'm, more likely to stay home and with my cat and do things, write research about grief vampires. If you want to know anything more about what I've been doing with psychics, just Google Susan Gerbeck, psychic. Not right now, but afterwards, maybe during the break. And you can see that I've done a lot of different things about different psychics. But in this case, I have been doing a lot of writing about Tyler Henry. And, and I did that because Tyler Henry's brand spanking me. We had no criticism, nothing. Nothing, nothing was known about him. So I, I said, all right, I'll take one. And I started writing about Tyler Henry, publishing in Skeptical Inquirer, and I think we're up to seven articles now. We're going to make it possible so that whenever he is Googled, because people are going, who's this? They're getting 
really great criticism. And I did a call out right in January, and I had response from some amazing people in our community. I asked people who are the biggest bloggers if they would please write about Tyree Henry, and that way, whenever people Googled, we could move the Google rankings up so that his, his the critical articles, and uh, Stephen Novella, David Gorski, um, I have a Metha, Jerry Coyne, oh gosh, I should have written it down, but it was about uh, Brian Denning, um, about uh, eight or nine people wrote uh, articles about him. You can find them all on his Wikipedia page because somebody wrote a Wikipedia page for Tyler Henry. It became notable enough. Now, I know you guys all like stats. This is three seconds. So, this is the stat page you use for Tyler Henry. And I want to make sure I point out really quickly that when I mention the stat, all we know is how many times Wikipedia page has been accessed. We do not know if they're a unique user. We do not know how long they stay on the page. All we know is if they're accessing the page. So keep that in mind as I, as I mentioned these numbers. This is Tyler Henry's Wikipedia pages for about a year and a half. And you can see these spikes here on the side. That's season one when they're really announcing him. Here's season two. Not quite so many stat views. And then here's some spikes for season three is being announced. So this is from February of 2016 to May of 2017, well, you know, like 13 months or so. I also want to point out this is 850,000 page, 850, page views, which is a hell of a lot. I would love to have 850,000 page views to a lot of our people. But if he was really communicating with the dead, does that make any sense? That would be an hour, not over 13 months or 15 months. Okay, so as I have a Wikipedia page also, Susan Gerbic. It's only accessed by just small amounts of people. I shouldn't have very many page views. But as this is Susan Gerbic's stats, page view stats for the exact same time frame as Tyler Henry. Here's season one, where I was barely mentioned as his most notable critic on his Wikipedia page. His Wikipedia page has many articles written by me, as well as, oh, Sharon Hall and all the other people who wrote about David. I mean, I'm just a big so as a Sorry. So um, here's the, uh, the the stats for Susan Gerbic. Here's we have all that we have the season two come out, and then you can see here's the two same spikes for season three. Now I'm gonna also um, I want you to take a look at this and see if you see something unusual. I'm gonna put the two get two stats together. Okay. You see it? It's not parabola. Right? So it's pretty obvious that people are going from one Wikipedia page to another. Because as I said, this is a very page has no business being accessed at all. <laughs> well, <I don't> <laughs> Ten people maybe, okay. And you can see how these oops, I'm sorry. <laughs> so you can see how these stats mirror each other. You can see the exact same here, spike here, spike here, spike here, spike here. Exactly the same. It is the same. They're going from one page to the other. But with this blue lines up here is thousands of page views, and the Gerbic page is receiving hundreds of page views. So it's a log logarith logarithmic chart, so it's not actually one for one, which would be really great if people were going from one to the critic. Anybody notice anything odd about the Gerbic stats who hasn't already heard this slide before? Anybody shout it out? <laughs> dips. Dips. Yeah, there's dips. It's a personal question. No. Right here and right here. What causes that? Deletion. Deletion. Uh, right, exactly. I heard. Yeah, so what has happened is somebody, you know, it was a fan of Tyler Henry because of the note they left on the page. They went to ban Susan Gerbic from Wikipedia. <laughs> Like that's gonna happen. Do they not know I have a team of people? I don't have time then in Wikipedia anymore. So these dips are because somebody took the entire criticism section off of the Tyler Henry Wikipedia page. Just completely eliminated the criticism section. Okay. All right. So as soon as it's noticed, it was added back in. And the question I receive most is do we have a lot of problems from people uh, vandalizing our work and things? No, not much. Because we know what we're doing, we do it right. But the criticism section was removed. So if, but you see it doesn't correspond with Tyler. So if there was no criticism on Tyler Henry's Wikipedia page, 
people are still going to go to the Wikipedia page and get information from him. Okay. Um, one, well, actually, two more stories, and then I'm done. Anybody see or hear of this? Besides Harry Hall. <laughs> see Harry. So on Facebook, we have a lot of people who give this information on Facebook, and they said, well, Susan, could you guys look into this? Like, we have nothing to do, right? So I've never heard of what the health, and again, you don't need to know about it. You don't need to watch this movie. Harriet's watched it for you, reporting on it. But um, what happened is, this is a vegan uh, documentary that is extremely slanted towards the vegan lifestyle. And this Harriet points out there's nothing wrong with the vegan lifestyle, but the claims they make are ridiculous, right? And you can look at it to see. Anyway, so we supported the movie, the documentary, right? So we had to go through this line to come, but one of the problems was that you have criticism. We Google this thing and we found some people writing blogs. That's nice, that's wonderful. But unless we have notable criticism from notable people, we can't put it on a Wikipedia page. That's how it works, guys. And it needs to be secondary sources. If you want more technical information, see me afterwards. But what are we going to do? So what we did is I reached out to Science-Based Medicine, and Harriet took it for the team. She watched the movie. She said, you owe me two hours in my life. <laughs> she watched it, and she is notable, because she has an awesome Wikipedia page. That's how you know if you're notable, is if you have a Wikipedia page. You can't have a Wikipedia page unless you're notable. And it's a giant circle. It writes my head when it explodes in that. But anyway, so she wrote a very great article, and Rob was able to use it on the Wikipedia page. There was a little bit of battle back and forth to get a little bit of that, to get this done. So here's, here's what the Wikipedia page had before as far as citations, about seven. And then we found this man, who lives in Vegas, and he's here, I want to meet him, anybody know him? He is a Z Dog MD, and he is a, a real person who's, a, a, he's a pair of many programs, in fact, he's had Tyler, he's talked to Tyler Henry, so I really want to meet him. And I have his name written down here, I'm happy to visit for you right now, but he has, he's a real doctor, medical doctor. And so he wrote about, uh, Tyler Henry did a thing on, I'm not Tyler Henry, um, with the health. And this is what he said. This man is responsible 
or being on the team for many of the vaccines that we use today, German measles, uh, some pneumonia, MMR, rabies, many different vaccines. So Stanley Blackhand sat on our list of things to do for years. Just years. We, we have thousands of things that he can do constantly. So don't rush to me after this and say, hey, have you thought of doing this page? I'm going to say, what are you joining? So, I'll show you how. So Stanley Blackhand, um, I hadn't heard of my so until we had the page got rewritten. This is the page now. And this is the Stan uh, Stanley Plotkin page and use 23 citations now. So I have, like I said, been a member of Stanley Plotkin. He is an amazing person. Um, and um, I'm really, really honored that we were able to do something for this man. Here is the page view beforehand. I call him on score, five citations. And here's what I heard from him. When I reached out to him after we wrote the Wikipedia page and said we had done this, I'm flattered that Jim took this, especially as I approached the end of my career and asked myself whether or not I've accomplished anything. Wow. <clears throat> oh, this day, I've done this slide so many times that I always see the chair in my eyes when I think of this. Can you imagine that? We know what Kim Kardashian is wearing these days, but we don't know anything about Stanley Black and Real Heroes. So I want my staff that's here, who doesn't know me better, to stand up. Quick, three minutes. Thank you. 
We'll do this tomorrow. So anytime today, or tomorrow morning, get yourself a beer just at cost, just so we can just have this. And you can keep this. You can, you can wear this through TSA just for fun. <laughs> okay, we're going to have our breaks. We'll see you at 11 o'clock. So far, so good. Congratulations. This is Congratulations, Susan. <laughs> Good job. Good job, Susan.